Hey everybody, what's up y'all? Welcome back to my channel. Tammy Talks here. Married at First Sight, Season 14, Boston, where are they now? Last episode, God's honest, last episode of Married at First Sight. I am, um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm a person that last season, the where are they now special, I really enjoyed, to be honest. Um, I think the where are they now special to me is more fulfilling. That's the word. I think it's more fulfilling than the actual reunion. Just because I feel like on the where are they now on the where are they now special, we get more of a an organic, more genuine feel to them. The conversations that we saw tonight, the way that the couples that are married work through things work through things, the way that the couples that have um separated the way that they were able to work through things, it seemed more organic, it seemed more genuine. Whereas on the reunion, people are more fixated and more focused on making themselves look good. You know what I mean? So, but let's go ahead and get into it. So before we get started, if you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I do breakdowns of various TV shows, both scripted and reality, interjecting my own thoughts, opinions, and theories into each and every recap. So, if you enjoy that type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel, thumbsing up the video, and then hopping into the comment section so we can talk about it. FYI, I respond back to my comments. I get so many people that will say something, I'll respond back, and they feel like I'm attacking them. Why are you commenting? Why not? <laughs> so just, just to preface, okay? If you comment, more than likely I'm going to comment back. It's called a discussion. It's not an attack. It's not an argument. It's just a discussion. <laughs> like, that's it. So let's go ahead and get into it, y'all. Um, so we start off with Lindsay. Lindsay, as we know, moved to California um, after her and Mark broke up. But she is back in Boston, she said, to see her dad. She said she only came back for two reasons. She said to see her dad and to sign divorce papers. That's a lie. Survey says you came back for three reasons because you wanted to film again. Lindsay, stop. Stop. I'm not playing with anybody in this recap. So many people were on bull. So many people were on dummy. I'm not playing with y'all with y'all this recap. Lindsay, you came back because uh, Lifetime and Married at First Sight told your ass you had to come back to fulfill your contractual agreement, this means you had to what? Film. That's why you came back. You didn't come back to see your dad. So she says she has not talked to Mark since the reunion. He doesn't bring out the best in her. She gets extremely frustrated when she talks to him. She, like, and it, again, it's once again, he doesn't do this for me. He doesn't add positivity to my life. He, Excuse me, he doesn't add this. He doesn't add any value to me. So I'm going to stay away from him. Leave that man alone. Sign the papers. Get the hell on. Go back to your hotel. Get ready for when this whole ran random getaway. And then leave everybody alone. Mark don't want you in your life any more than you want him, any more than you don't want him in yours. Okay? I want Lindsay to stop thinking that she is this amazing prize that when she cuts somebody off that is oh I cut you off so like just in case it's like girl bye nobody cares nobody was even like you didn't even meet up with anybody this entire situation this entire reunion type feel you didn't even meet up with anybody nobody likes you Lindsay, I want you to sit on that. Nobody likes you. On the cast where there were 10 of y'all, 10, not one person, none of the other nine people met up with you to have a drink and catch up. That don't tell you something about yourself? So then we move over to Elijah and Katina. They are still together. They feel like they're doing great. Um, they're doing a little in-house sip and paint. Um, Katina says she now considers Olajuwon to be her best friend. Olajuwon said that he feels they are able to better get to know each other. Um, now that the cameras are gone, they're not, you know, distracted by the other couples because he feels that sometimes the drama of the other couples can kind of come into your relationship. That is, that is, um, true. What is it? The trans, like, energy is 
simply transferred from person to person, like it's not destroyed or something. Y'all know how it goes. I don't do science. But energy is definitely absorbed by other people. If you're around somebody that is constantly negative, you're going to start to get, you know, you're going to absorb their mood. So I can definitely see where he's coming from with that. While Katina enjoys um, the time they're spending together, she feels that it's a little too much. A little too much. She um, and She's worried that it's going to affect their chemistry. That don't even make sense to me. But she's worried it's going to affect her chemistry, and she kind of needs, um, needs a break. You can tell that Olajuwon is kind of uh, about it, but he's a good sport, and he kind of lets her know. He understands what she what she's saying, but he doesn't really know what she wants him to do about it. And she doesn't know in that moment either. Y'all just need to take a, like, take a break. Spend some time with your friends. Um, Katina, you had all them people that were considered your friends all throughout, you know, this process. We never really saw two people film with you that were like your friends start meeting up with some of these other people, um, just to get a break away from each other. That's, that's all y'all need. So Mark, Steve, and Chris all meet up. Um, Mark is at his house trying to fix his cat's kitty litter. The litter box, he drops the shit, and I'm like, was it full? I just, oh, I can't do cats. If you are a cat lover, close your ears, but I cannot do cats. If I know that you have a cat, I will not eat at your house. You'll be lucky if I come to your house. I can't do cats. So Steve comes in. Y'all know Steve is a renaissance man, and Steve does everything well but work. So Steve is down on the floor, rolling up his sleeve. Steve said, well, let's fix it. We see Steve snapping stuff back in place and lifting it while Steve is doing that. Mark, whose litter box it is, goes and sits on the couch with Chris to talk. I said, wow. I would, I, I would take Steve. Steve would have to get a job with me, though. He would have to get some type of job. It could really just be if you want to be a DoorDash delivery driver I would be okay with that Steve because I feel like you do everything <laughs> Steve does everything else so Steve is fixing that so Chris said that even though Alyssa apologized at the reunion um it wasn't what he expected or really what anybody expected and that's because it didn't seem like a very genuine apology it was still very much rooted in the 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 vein of I lashed out because this happened to me. It wasn't, you know what, I I was an effed up person and this is what I did. You know, I apologize for that. It was very much um, reactionary. It's almost like Alyssa was trying to make sure, trying to make sure that she didn't get shown in a bad light. She may have thought she was fixing it, but she didn't. So he feels that she didn't take any accountability. And at this point, because they don't have any type of relationship, whether friendship, acquaintance, anything, he just don't care anymore. And kudos to you, um, Chris, because you don't need her ass anyways. Steve wants an apology from Lindsay. Um, we know that Steve is one of the, is the most emotionally mature person that we have seen, I feel like, in general. On the past couple seasons of Married at First Sight, and he is not playing with Lindsay. He wants an apology. Um, him and Noy are still doing good, but they are still having some major issues. And Steve mentions kids as one of them. We know that Noy is dead set on having three kids. Even though Noy was raised with two other siblings and they struggled, she still thinks that's the, the absolute very best family dynamic. Um, Steve only wants two kids. Noise dead set on three, so they're going back and forth with that. Chris said he is now talking to someone new, Olivia from the New Orleans season. So as we recall, if you guys um did not watch that season, she was married to Brett, who was a super type A asshole, and was really threatened, I feel like, by Olivia's success. So if I'm if I recall if I remember correctly, Olivia is a nurse practitioner. And he was like, yeah, she's a nurse that can write scripts. I didn't like that at all. I have some friends that are nurse practitioners. I have some friends that are registered nurses. I have friends that are CNAs. Don't diminish and make it seem 
And like, don't do that. Don't, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. So it, since things did not work out with Brett, Olivia is apparently back on the market. So Chris um, is talking to her. They have not met in person yet, but Chris said he's going to fly her out. I said, get into it, Chris. You're going to fly her out? Chris said, I'm going to swipe my card. I'm going to book her a ticket, and I'm going to bring her up here to meet. Now, we all know that production more than likely paid for this, and production set this up, but it makes for good television, right? So we then find out from Steve that his sister basically felt sorry for Mark and wants to set Mark up on a date. Um, Mark gets super nervous and he goes from like a shark to a dolphin and he's, um, he's super nervous and he's just kind of like, oh man, I don't know if I'm ready. I don't want to date date. Mark, you ain't, you ain't marrying a lady again. You're not marrying her, sweetheart. You're literally just going on a date just to talk. We then see Alyssa. Alyssa meets up with her friend. They're going to look at like a rescue dog or they're going to adopt a dog or something. Um, Alyssa said it's been really hard, you know, with the, the hate and the negativity. But she feels it's time to move on and be the good person that she knows she can be. Alyssa go run this good person thing down into the ground. Girl, it is not giving the vibe that you thought it was. So... She tells her friend that she has been talking to Ryan from the Houston season, from last season. Remember, he had redhead Brett. Brett was not outdoorsy enough for Ryan. So Ryan said, Ryan was really <coughs> turned away and taken aback by her, um, her red hair. Ryan wanted a little short blonde um, lady who would be okay with skeet shooting and whitewater rafting and, and hiking. And Brett was just not that way. Brett liked to play volleyball. <laughs> okay, so that didn't work. So they have been talking, um, and she said that Ryan is exactly who she, what she asked for. Now, I find that to be odd because she doesn't know Ryan's um, core values because Ryan was like a mute most of his season. So she doesn't know Ryan's core values. Um, she also should know that Ryan is not loyal, which is one of the five things that she mentioned. Because if Ryan was loyal, Ryan would not have been on a dating app while he was married to Brett. But that's all, you know, whatever, because he wears cowboy boots and he's a Republican. And in her eyes, he's more handsome than Chris. So that's who she's talking to now. We see Elijah Wan meets up with Michael and, is it Jeff T? Jeff, Jeffite? I forgot the man's name. So Elijah Wan tells him, tells Jeff that they need some advice. Um, he feels that him and Katina are spending too much time together. His friend Jeff was like, that's your only problem? Boy, bye. So it's basically give each other a break. Spend some time with your friends. Um... You got to want to work at a relationship. This is one of the ways that you can make it work. Michael then says that he has not talked to Jasmina. He feels that Jasmina came in with a plan to make him look like he didn't do anything um, to try to help the marriage. He feels that she, he said that he tried to set up dates. He tried to make himself available. He was there when she needed help with Mr. Feeney, all this other type of stuff. He then said he realizes now they have a lot of unresolved things that they did not, that he doesn't want to ignore. I'm going to say this about Michael. If Jasmina was lying, I kind of feel like that's on you because you, Michael has to learn to stand up and speak for himself. And I know that some of y'all are going to say that Jasmina did not allow him the time to talk. But I also feel like be assertive. If Jasmina is sitting up here saying, she said on two different occasions, I did all the calling. I did all of this. Michael didn't. Michael literally sat there like a fucking mute. If you were low-key and dead-ass setting up dates and doing all that stuff, check Jasmina's rude ass in. Tell her to shut up. Tell her to let me talk. And then clear that up. But Michael, you sat up there like a simp. And you chose to let that lady act like you didn't do anything. I'm sorry, but that is nobody's fault but Michael. It does not mean Jasmina was right before y'all have a heart attack. So listen to everything I'm saying, okay? Listen, 
Let's use our, let's do both our ears. I'm not saying that what Jasmina did was right. I'm saying that Michael needs to learn to be more assertive because if the way that Michael is claiming that Jasmina basically lied about what happened between um, decision day and then them two weeks that they ended there or, you know, decided to call off the marriage, you should have stood up and said, that's a lie because I was trying to plan dates. So right now it's her, her truth, his truth, and then the actual truth that's in the middle. But we don't know because Michael is, is going to do all this bumping of the gums in the confessional into Elijah Wan, but you get in front of um, Jasmina and you're scared to talk. So Elijah one tells him that he needs to make sure that she takes some type of accountability. And I agree. Accountability is super, super important in relationships and friendships, just in life. If you cannot take accountability for any of your actions, how are you an adult? How are you an adult if you can't take accountability for any of your actions, right? Make, get, make Jasmina admit to her part in the failure of the marriage. Because if you ask me, it was 50-50 on who ruined that marriage. Michael says that he thinks if they talk, it's going to turn into an argument. And he wants to avoid that. Boy, if you don't go on and cuss her ass out and be done with it, you don't have to see that lady no more. Cuss her out. Say what you need to say. Get that off your chest. And then be done with her and call it a day. What's she going to do besides try to cuss you out again? Cuss her out real good. Let her know what it is and what it ain't going to be. And then walk out the room. That's all you have to do. But you cannot be scared of conflict. That is unattractive. So then we have Katina, Jasmina, and Alyssa. They are out to get drinks. Jasmina said that she's talking to people, but not on any dates, which means that Jasmina is back to talking to people on probably Tinder and black people meet <laughs> um, that are across the country, and she don't have to really see them. Jasmina really should be on 90 Day Fiance. That's what she should have did, because we could have talked long distance, and she didn't have to see you. She get, I would only have to see you for about a week or two. And then she can send you back to your country, your foreign land. And then she can go about the single life that she wants to live um, on the flip. So Katina lets them know things are good with Elijah, but they're just spending a lot of time together. Alyssa said that she is texting Ryan or she's been texting Ryan and she wants to invite Ryan up for the weekend. And I guess I don't understand. Why do you want to invite him? Like what part of what part of outside of production saying, let's bring Ryan in. What part of the game involves you telling Ryan that he should come up this particular weekend. So then we get Alyssa doing this very cringy. We should get a, a we should get a house to get there. It came across so fake. It was like, girl, you should have practiced your lines before you sat down. You knew that you were the person that when you got the okay from the cameraman that was back here like this, this is your cue to start asking and throw in that we should have a getaway trip. Alyssa, you know damn well nobody want to hang out with you. But we're going to have a getaway. Um, Jasmina said that she doesn't talk to Michael, so she knows it's going to be a little awkward. He checked out and she doesn't understand why. Well, Jasmina, you should understand why. You set up on that reunion and you once again... <sighs> Talk, to, talk down to that man. You once again made him feel small. You didn't let him really get anything out. And you took no accountability for what you did in the relationship and what happened after decision day. You know why it's awkward. You know why he don't want to talk to you. Let's not be shocked. Again, accountability, that's like the word of the day. So Katina wants to invite Lindsay because everybody should be invited. Production told us everybody has to come. Um, Alyssa said that she thinks things might be messy if Lindsay comes. Now, I agree. Things might get messy if Lindsay comes. But I feel like, Alyssa, you don't get to make that call. Because you couldn't even be nice to the one person that you were supposed to be nice to. And you're worried about somebody ruining something. Didn't you ruin Chris's whole marriage? Didn't you ruin Chris's entire honeymoon situation? 
don't do this. Sit, sit back, drink your drink, and text Ryan to the side. Stephen Noy. So they are retiling his damn kitchen. Why? Because Noy wants the house to look a certain way before she moves in. Imagine the gall, the nerve, the audacity of Noy who lives in that closet that she calls an apartment feeling that Steve's one bedroom mansion in the sky, because y'all say he's rich, is not suitable enough for her. So they in there retiling the damn kitchen. Um, and Noy still feels like a lot of things need to be done before she moves in because she wants to make sure it's livable for the both of them. It's livable now. Steve is living there. It's very livable now. Aren't you staying there, you know, a couple nights a week? If you don't go in and pack up your shoebox and move in the rest of the week, I'm sick of Noy. Like, this is stupid. This is absolutely stupid. I'm moving next month, right? 30 days, I will be moving. Should I keep this apartment because it's very sentimental? Because I have memories over in front of the fireplace. I have memories over in the kitchen. Like, girl, get be done with it. Move the hell on. Um, so Steve said that he is going to watch. They want to watch Steve's nieces um, because they there are three of them. And it, it'll be a good trial run. Noi feels like, oh, yeah, that'll be no problem. I said, yeah, okay, okay. So then we have Lindsay and Mark. They're meeting at the lawyer's office so that they can finally sign the divorce papers. Lindsay is, of course, being the irritating asshole that she is. Yeah, it's going to be a great day. <laughs> it's going to be a great day. <laughs> and it's like, Lindsay, sign the papers and, and, and just leave. So while she's signing, she's like, yep, like that. Yep, it's definitive. Yep, and it's like, she just can't be a decent person for the life of her. I know she's lonely as hell over in California. I know she ain't made a friend. I know she ain't made a friend yet. So Lindsay says that she feels liberated signing the paper. She feels free. I said, okay. Mark, on the other hand, said he feels a weight lifted off of him as well. Once the lawyers leave... Lindsay wants to have a conversation. The way Mark sighed was how I sighed too. Let's do it, Lindsay. So Lindsay apologizes for the <laughs> the bowling alley bathroom rant. She was embarrassed at how she embarrassed him. Um, she did not mean she she said in her eyes she was just venting to production. She didn't mean. For it, she didn't mean for him to hear it. And I kind of feel like that's even worse because what you're saying to me, and Lindsay's apology was genuine, okay? You can tell that it was genuine. She she truly meant her apology. But to me, I would have took it based on how she worded it. I would have took it to be, I'm sorry you heard it because I really just wanted to trash you to production in private. But since you heard, now I feel bad. But Mark is okay with it. Mark said that he accepts her apology. And he's thankful for the things that she, like, indirectly taught him. He eats better. He lost weight. He's standing up for himself more. So he said he's definitely going to take the positive memories and the positive influence that she did have on him. And he holds on to that more than he holds on to the, um, the negative. Chris and Olivia, they're out on a date. Chris said that he's allergic to cats. Olivia said, me too. But I get shots every, what would she say? She gets shots every month or something so that she can deal with her two cat children. Why you want a pet that you're allergic to? Why would you want a pet that you're allergic to? They talk about their divorces, what were wrong in each one. Chris invites her to the getaway. Olivia said, will Alyssa be there? Because she does not want to come in hot and heavy. She doesn't want to blindside her. These, basically, it's like, these ain't my people. I don't have my crew with me. So I can't come in. You know, she don't have her Imani and, and, and Karen to, to help her. So she doesn't want to go into a situation um, or and put herself into a situation. Mark and Alicia Wan, uh, Alicia Wan. Mark and Elijah Wan, um, go to a clothing store. Mark wants to get some clothes for his date. Alyssa and Ryan have a date at the bowling alley. Ryan is scuffing up 
the bowling alley, the bowling lanes with them cowboy boots. I'd have told him, I don't give a good goddamn who is filming here. You're going to put on these bowlers. So they're out there. They seem to be vibing, having a good time. Um, Alyssa says that she's thinking of moving to um, Austin, Texas, because that's where the cowboys are. And she's ready to date again now. Ryan said that he is just now ready to date again within like the past couple of weeks. And I feel like that that kind of made Alyssa look away. Even though Ryan was like truly in um, a marriage with Brett, you know, they were together for X amount of time. They went through the entire process. Um, it kind of looks away, Alyssa, that you're just automatically ready to be like, yeah, I'll just try it again. But whatever. Um, they have little, little bitty flirt, little trivial flirtatious moments of, I have to show you my city. Show me all the things. I want to see all the things. So they're going to hang out, get to know each other more. Steve and Noy, um, they babysitting these kids and it's, it's bath bombs all over the place. It's pizza sauce. The, you know, kids are nasty. They eating a they eating a flower off the table, and Noy is just kind of seeing how hectic it can be with three kids, especially kid, younger kids that are closer in age. Um, so she's trying to play it cool, but she's tired, she's stressed, she's overwhelmed, and that was literally you just watching these kids for a couple of hours until their parents come and pick them up. Their parents can't come and, like, you will be the parents. Won't be no come get your kid because this is yours to start all over the next day. So, Merc is on his date with Crystal. They went to some game, like, situation. Um, it looked fun. You can tell that Mark was kind of nervous, but they had a really good time together. Whatever place they were at looked fun. I would like to go there. So, then we have Elijah, Ron, Katina, Noy, and Steve. They're on, like, some, like um, a double date. I think they're like a brewery. So Elijah wants to tell Katina that he wants her to get back to hanging out with her friends. She used to be really, really into her friends and hanging out with her friends. Um, and he wants her to get back to that so that they're not, you know, spending so, so much time together. They can have like a date night that is dedicated to them, but they have to get back into like an actual everyday routine of life, which is good. Noi tells Steve that she's ready to move in now in the next couple of months. Initially, she wasn't ready, but now she she wants to make sure that she's compromising so that Steve is just as happy in the marriage as she is. Um, she also realized how much work three kids are. So she's agreed to, let's just start with two kids, and then we can see what progresses from there. I'm so sick of Noi, but I, I hope they have a long, fruitful marriage. So then we have Alyssa. Alyssa meets up with Ryan. She's pissed that Ryan and Lindsay are friends, okay? Um, it's not the fact that they are friends per se, she said, but it's the fact that Ryan is conversing with Lindsay, didn't tell her. I also feel, has Ryan told Lindsay that he's talking to you, Alyssa? So Alyssa feels betrayed. Um, she said that she was telling the guys that she was going to bring Ryan on the trip. And the guys were all saying, oh, she FaceTime, he FaceTimes with Lindsay. Ryan said he don't have Lindsay's phone number. Alyssa said, I have the facts, okay? I have seen you guys, people have seen you guys on there. Ryan said that it's Instagram. Ryan's stance is, we're friends, we're just talking, um, very platonic like is is nothing. Alyssa Stan says this is my enemy. And if you want to be friends with her, that's fine. But Lindsay is somebody that um talks a lot of shit about her. She feels that he wasn't honest. I said, oh, but just earlier you said that Ryan is who you asked for. But now you're saying that he's not honest. Chris, at the very least, was honest, but you didn't give Chris a chance to be honest. But okay. So Alyssa also tells him that Lindsay was trying to tell people that, or she was telling people that Ryan was trying to get with her. Ryan does not deny that. Um, Alyssa is upset. She uninvites him on the trip. And Alyssa walks away. 
Brian said he's not going to do the drama. This just also goes to show how trash of, trash of a person Ryan is, which we saw on his season. But this also goes to show just how awful that... Um, I, I hope Alyssa saw how bad she got treated and how, she, how bad she felt in that moment and how bad she ultimately made Chris feel in that moment. And I think that that moment did for her because of the scene that they have later on. So then we have, we're at the getaway. Alyssa tells Jasmine and Katina about Ryan being friends with Lindsay. Katina just sits there and just, Katina don't never know what to say in group settings. She just be mystified. Um, Alyssa has a hoodie on that says, I'm a good person. Again, girl, you're trying to make fetch happen and it's not going to happen. It's not going to work for you. She tells them how she feels betrayed. Alyssa, um, I'm sorry, Jasmina says that Alyssa can be very dramatic and she can exaggerate. But in this instance, um, she agrees that he should have mentioned it to her. Do I think he should have agreed? Yeah, because they're on the same cast. Like, I think because they're castmates, a quick mention would not have hurt anything or hurt anybody. But that's Ryan. So Olivia is talking to the ladies about what happened on her season. And while she's talking to them, Sans, um, Lindsay, Alyssa's like staring at her. And I can't tell if it's a look of why is she here or what, but Alyssa definitely had a look on her face. So we see the guys are cooking. Alyssa comes in and asks, what can she do to help? Elijah Ron says she can cook the whole meal. Y'all pay attention to that. Y'all take note of that. Because while some people are saying, oh, he was joking, that's how he truly feels. And that is a, a, a key indicator in how you know that Elijah Ron has not progressed. He has not done the 180 that he is trying to make it seem like he has done in this marriage since this the, um, decision day. He is not. He has not. But y'all are going to skip over that because even though I love black love, y'all are going to skip over that. But I feel like that was a very important statement to pay attention to. Katina Sweetheart, if you are watching these episodes, pay attention to the fact that your husband, like the fact that all he's doing is chopping the pepper, pay attention to that, that he told the woman that came in and asked, what can I do to help? It wasn't, oh, can you, you know, wash and drain the beans? Can you shred some cheese? It was, can you cook the whole meal? Um, Lindsay comes in. Nobody want to see Lindsay's ass. And she sees Steve and Alyssa. Steve, because Steve is so mature. Steve, like, speaks, answers her questions. Very monotone, but he's engaging. Alyssa's ignoring her altogether. Lindsay feels they're being weird. Lindsay, why are you here in this velvet dress in this faux fur um, stole. What is going on? It was raining. Your fur didn't get like... <sighs> Who wears a velour dress or velvet dress in the rain? What is going on? <coughs> Why are you so dressed up anyways? So Jasmine is talking to Olivia. And she asks if it's awkward for her to be there with a bunch of people she don't know. I said no. Just imagine this is real world, and it'll be fine. Um, Olivia said no because it just reminds her of how much fun that their cast would have when they would all have big group meetups and stuff like that. Um, while they're talking, Michael comes over and interrupts. And I'm thinking, y'all are going to be there all night, but go on to talk. Michael tells Jasmine that he feels annoyed and he felt played by her behavior at the reunion. Um... Feels that she should have just said that, you know, I'm not feeling this, you know, it wasn't working. But he feels that she painted a story that said he wasn't trying at all. He then admits that he stopped talking to her before their reunion. Jasmina said that Michael did have the opportunity to speak, which he did. And Michael did speak first. And the first thing he said was that she didn't try. Because of that, she felt played. Um, she said her feelings were hurt because of that, because like she repeated for the 10th time, I was calling, I was texting, I was initiating contact. Michael once again retreats into the shell of himself 
And that whole, well, I'm not going to engage in conflict or whatever. I'm going to just let people say what they want to say. Nah, that's stupid. If you feel, again, Michael is still not disproving or refuting anything that she is saying. So, Michael, were you really calling? Were you really planning dates? Was Jasmina really texting you every day? He has yet to, like, actually be like, you're a liar, you weren't. But I've, and that's why I feel like Michael's not doing that because I honestly feel like Jasmina is because that's something that can easily be proved. You know what I mean? She can easily, easily prove that. And I think Michael knows that. Now, if Michael, if you were honestly trying to set up things with her and trying to do that, say it. Make her, like, tell her. Tell her, you know what, Jasmina? Remember that day I called you at 747 on that Thursday night and I told you we should go to the movies and you didn't respond back? That's what you need to do. Give us some solid proof so that we, we're not forced to take Jasmina's word for it. I know some of y'all aren't because y'all don't like her, but I feel like there is some truth to what Jasmina is saying because Michael is not refuting it. At all. Michael has never once said, no, you weren't texting me. He has never said that. Ever. Nonetheless, they're not together. Um, Jasmine said, look, we we have the same friends. We share mutual friends. So, like, at some point, you know, we should be cordial with one another. They agree to just be cool, which is fine. We then get to Lindsay and Steve. Lindsay said that she was caught off guard by Steve at the reunion. I didn't know we had a problem. Steve did not appreciate the comment about them raising kids on a one person, on a one household, one, um, one salary household. The comments about him not having money. He didn't like that bullshit, right? So she apologizes. Steve said, yeah, we can be cordial, okay? I accept your apology. I receive it. We can be cordial. But for us to move forward, I'm going to need to see some growth. We're not going to just be all words over here. We're going to be just bumping the gums. I want to see some action. So then Noi comes in and tag teams in and was like, but do you understand what he's saying? Do you? I said, stand by your man, Noi. Get into it. So Noi just wanted Lindsay to really understand what the problem was. Like, we don't like how you was talking shit about us. You need to start taking accountability for the things that you did. And I feel like we saw Lindsay smiling in everybody's face and then talking shit in the confessionals. And at this point, everybody has watched the show. I'm not going to be cool with you when you was talking shit about me in the confessional as if you didn't realize that this was going to be on TV. So Lindsay starts crying and said that she sees how, after watching the show, she sees how she would deflect and how she would lash out. And, you know, she's happy for them because you guys are the... You guys are the gold. And I said, girl, don't cry. Don't, don't, don't do this crying bull. Don't do this. So they are just kind of looking at her. You know, Noi is always just, Noi is always uncomfortable. Don't know what to do with her face. So then finally we have Chris and Alyssa. Um, Alyssa pulls Chris to the side and she finally gives him a genuine apology and said that it's nice to see him with someone. Olivia seems awesome. She hopes it works. Um, she apologizes, even though she said she, she wishes things would have worked out differently for the both of them. She hopes they can move forward and be cordial. Chris said he is, he accepts her apology and he feels that they could have always been at this place had she had just not been a bitch about it before, but they're cordial. They're moving on. So Michael said he's ready to find his person. Jasmina wants marriage even more now. And she's going to treat her next guy so amazing. We don't believe you. You need more people, Jasmine. Nobody believes you. But, girl, go for it. Um, Chris said he doesn't know what marriage is. And because of that, he's still ready to experience it. Alyssa doesn't know what to expect in life. But she is a good person. Lindsay is looking. Um, Lindsay is enjoying her inner peace and joy. And she's ready to ride the wave. I'm in a good place now. I said, oh, okay. 
And Mark said that his future is bright and he hopes there's love in the future. Um, the two married couples said that they're hoping to, you know, have a good, long-lasting marriage with one another. They hope things, you know, work out for the both for in their individual couples. So thank you to everybody that rocked with me. This season will be back July 6th for, what is it, San Diego, San Francisco, for the next one. Um, if you have not already subscribed to the channel, thumbs up the video, hop in the comment section, y'all. Let's talk about it. Peace.